Hey everybody, good morning. Hope you guys are doing good this morning. Just on my way down to Table Rock Lake this morning, have a uh, Fish the Moment instructional uh, on the water lesson today. And we're going to be doing some jerk bait fishing, probably throw a little swim bait around a little bit. And should be a good time. Not too bad out right now. It's about 30 degrees, supposed to warm up into the 40s. So it uh, should be just a typical January day here in Missouri. But hey, uh, just wanted to take this chance on the way down the lake to do the video for today. Um, I was going to finish it up. My, I've been doing the uh, lipless crankbait category uh, tips the last few days. And I was going to finish it up today. But <clears throat> since I'm not in the tackle room this morning to show you baits, I think I'm going to mix it up a little bit and get, sort of go off the path a little bit and give a break from techniques and sort of talk about you know some other things and the the thing i wanted to talk about today i think it's sort of an interesting you know topic it is for me anyway and you know a lot of people i fish with and that is is the is the in the big picture why do we fish you know what is it about fishing that attracts us to to doing it like we do and you know the people that follow me on this channel you, you guys are obviously really passionate about fishing you know, so why do we do it? And, um, you know, I've, I'm sort of like a lot of guys out there. You know, I've, I've loved, for just whatever reason, I've just loved fishing ever since I can remember. Ever since I was a little bitty kid, my earliest memories are of those times that I spent on the lake. And, and when I was a little bitty kid, I didn't get to spend a lot of time on the lake. You know, my dad would take me fishing. We, we, we'd go fishing, I don't know, probably you know, once every two or three months down at either Grand Lake or Table Rock when I was a little bitty kid, like, you know, six or seven. But every time I went, it just like, it, it was just like the greatest thing in the world for me. So I know a lot of you feel that way too, but um, when you're talking about what attracts people to fishing, you know, I've, I've had a chance to really uh, experience this firsthand as far as in so many different situations over the course of the last you know 40 years in my tournament fishing i've had a chance to fish with thousands of different people i mean from from every every walk of life every background you can match and i i mean i i fish with you know just everyday people you know i fish with athletes i fish with actors and actresses i fish with professional professional athletes professional i fish with Payne stewart professional golfer you know uh, you know race nascar drivers i mean just uh, you know veterans of wars world war ii veterans you know war and terror veterans afghanistan veterans you know vietnam war veterans wounded warriors you know billionaires you know people that were homeless almost so i've had a chance to to really the point is i've had a chance to be in the boat with with about every you know i guess demographic or type of person you can uh, you can think about and I've witnessed it firsthand what fishing does to these people, you know, when they get out on the lake. Even if they don't really, even if they're not good anglers or, or they don't fish that much, I've witnessed the change in them that takes place when they get on the water. And it's been a super interesting deal. <clears throat> now, I'm going to use that one example. You know, it's like uh, when you're fishing, you know, fishing is one of those things in life that is real. It's like, you know, so many things that we do in our life. It's like the jobs that we work, um, the belief systems that we have, whether it be your political viewpoints, your religious viewpoints, your, your uh, just your, your, the viewpoint that you have on reality, you know, within the demographic that you are. All of these viewpoints that we have in life, a lot of it, a lot of it isn't real. A lot of it is stuff that we have learned. We've been, we've been, you know, conditioned to believe. People have taught us to believe certain things from a young age, and a lot of it is colored by other people's perception. But when you're on the water, and when you're out in nature, you know, water is just one aspect of nature. But and a lot of people that watch this channel, they also hunt. So. You know, when you're out on the water or you're, you're in the woods or you're in the field or whatever like that, the big attraction on a primal level, in my opinion, that gets people, you know, into those environments is the fact that it's real. You know, when you're outside, it's like the natural world is real. There's nothing that's made up. There's nothing that's fake. It's, it's primal. It's raw. And it's part of who we are as a species of humans. 
and there's there's a big attraction to that you know on a real basic fundamental level now you know so that's one aspect of it the second aspect of it from what I found out is it's extremely healing to fish it's extremely healing to be out in the outdoors it's extremely healing to be in nature and that's why you have so many parks around the country why do you think that for example like in New York City Central Park is such a popular place or why is it in any metropolitan city that you go to that the, when people go to the parks you know they always have a good time they're relaxed it's therapeutic to them people need that connection to nature it's there's value to that and I think a lot of times people don't put enough value in nature they don't put enough value in wild places they're so focused on you know living the American dream or building the American dream and having more and getting more that they overlook how valuable nature is in fishing hunting hiking camping whatever like that and I and personally I think it's 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 time that we you know had some type of a shift in our consciousness where we put more economic and you know social value on just the wild places that we still have left in this country including our water but back to fishing a little bit here um, let me use one example here where I'm talking about how impactful fishing is but back when I was getting started out in my tournament career I just started fishing the Bassmaster circuit um, I was I was uh, doing a little they had back in Joplin Missouri uh, one of the local television stations there I had like a little fishing tip show on it um, and what do we do is like during the sports cast of this little uh, uh, during the sports cast of the news like of the local news like once a week I'd go fishing around the, the area lakes around Joplin and I do a little, like a one minute fishing tip and they put it on the, the, the sports uh, cast once a week over there simply because the uh, general manager of that television station he was a big he loved a bass fish he was a big bass fisherman so anyway he had a friend of his that lived in Joplin there <clears throat> that was a super successful businessman he uh, mega wealthy you know had a ran a giant business there in, in southwest Missouri had tons of employees you know just a you know as successful and as big of a businessman that you could you know imagine and he would and this the friend of mine that ran the television station he was a good friend of this other person and he would invite us to go fishing with him once in a while and when we get out there and we go fishing three or four times a year together and you know when we get out there it's like all this you could tell he liked to be on the water but at the same time his mind was on business it's like all he talked about was business it was like how to make more money, how to increase profits, all that type of stuff. I mean, that's what was on his mind. So I stayed friends with these with these two individuals for years and years and years. And about 10 years ago, uh, this person that I'm talking about that was a super successful businessman, you know, he retired from his business and he called me up and he wanted to move down to Grand Lake, get a place down at Grand Lake. So anyway he moved down to Grand Lake got a place on the lake super nice place and all he wanted to do was fish it's like he didn't care about anything else about business about what had happened before in his life all he wanted to do was fish and I'd go down and fish with him you know two or three times a year and that's all he talked about when he was on the water you could tell that his mind and his body and his energy and his spirit was so relaxed so grateful that he didn't have the pressures of, of work you know that he'd carried on for so long and and he never talked about it he never talked about the business or anything all he wanted to know was like uh, you know he'd, he'd be fascinated by watching the pelicans on the water you know he just wanted to know about fishing techniques you know when he caught a fish you know you could just tell he would just light up unbelievable and I got thinking about that and it's like here's this person that lived his whole life, you know, <clears throat> working basically just to make money for no, for no other reason by, with that. And here it is in the twilight of his life, he finally gets a chance to do what really makes him feel alive, what really makes him, you know, love life. And, you know, he developed Alzheimer's real shortly after that and never really got to experience it. So, 
you know, here's a person that spent, you know, 50 years of his life just chasing the, the rat race and, you know, you know, doing all these things that aren't real. I mean, just to the extreme. And at the very end of his life, he goes back to those things that are real and it's healing and it's therapeutic to him. And I've seen that so much out there. It's just like, you know, one of the things that, one of the things that I always, you know, relate to or talk about, it's like people say, you know, when you're on your deathbed, you know, when you're laying there, are you gonna, and you're thinking about your life and, you know, any regrets that you have, are you gonna regret that you didn't work more, that you didn't work harder, that you didn't, you know, have a bigger tax break, that your 401k wasn't bigger, that you didn't have a house that was 2,000 more square feet? Is that what you're gonna regret? And it's not, it's the, the thing that you're gonna regret is doing the things that make you feel alive, spending time with the people that you love and want to be around. That's what's important in life. And, you know, I think that we get caught up a lot of times into things that just, you know, are simply not important because we're conditioned to do so. And the great thing about fishing and why we fish is fishing is that avenue. Fishing is that avenue to reality. And it's the thing that makes us feel alive. It creates passion. It, you know, it creates a sense of wonderment. It gives you joy. It's, it sends you back to that childlike mind a little bit. Every time that I come down here to Tabor Rock Lake to go fishing, my mind goes back to 1967, 1968 when I was six or seven years old. And we'd come down here um, a couple times a year and get a fish the lake. I can still smell. It's like the, the boat dock at Rod and Reel Resort on Tabor Rock Lake. I remember when it was six years, when I was six or seven years old, and I'd walk down into that old creaky boat dock. I could smell the fish. You could, people had been cleaning fish down there, and so it's got that boat dock smell. And anytime I get a whiff of that now, 50 years later, that takes me back to being six years old. So there's a there's a magic and there's a mystery that comes with connecting to nature and to and to fishing and to being on the water and being walking in the woods. And I don't think, you know, one of the big things about it is as a society, we do not put enough value on that. We don't. We, you know, we think nothing about bulldozing down a 100-acre uh, section of beautiful oak trees to put up a dang strip mall. I mean, is that where we want to go? Is that what we want to do? Is that the, you know, the, the what we want to leave, you know, for our grandchildren? And I just think, that it's, it's high time in this country or on the planet in general that we realize how important and how much um, not only material value but how much just social value that maintaining our water, our wild places, our parks, our, our forests, everything, anything that's natural, maintaining that prist pristine state to give people an avenue to get out there to get that release because we need that. I mean, we need that as human beings to be in nature. And fishing is just, for me, has been one of those, you know, things that have allowed me to do that. And I've been really fortunate enough to be able to spend so many days of my life on the water and look forward to continuing to do so because it just makes me feel alive. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about if you've been out there. So that's one of the reasons I'm so you know, passion about, you know, environmental issues, legislation that protects the quality of our air and our water and our land and protects our land for future generations. Because I live it, I'm in it all the time. I see the value. And one of the things you'll find out is a lot of people don't place value on environmental issues or don't place value on wild things or wild places or water are the people that are disconnected from that a little bit or the people that don't, you know, see the long-term ramifications of what we're doing. So, anyway, this is a little spill off on that, but get back to the question as far as why we fish. We fish because it makes us feel alive. We fish because it gives us passion. We fish because it's real. It's not plastic. It's not fake. It's not some sterile man-made environment. And as human beings, I mean, we're, we are animals like any other animal on this planet. We've evolved you know, to higher level intellectually, but at the same time, we are still connected to those things in nature, grounded to the earth, grounded to those things in, on this planet that, you know, have been part of our being for millions of years. So, you know, I, like I said, it's, 
you know, one of the greatest things that I've seen, you know, in my fishing is going fishing with people from all walks of life and just seeing how being on the water changes them a little bit. Changes them for the good. I've never seen anybody on, that gets out on the water or out in nature that comes out of it and it wasn't a good experience. And it's just like today, you know, the person, I've never met this person I'm taking fishing today, but I'm sure that I'll see that in, in their eyes. I'll see it, you know, that it, there's a, you know, a healing aspect that comes regardless how many we catch or don't catch. So, anyway, just a thought for the day, everybody. Um, like I said, I hope you guys are doing good. Just wanted to throw that out there and uh, take a little break from tips. But tomorrow, I promise we'll get back on the tips. We'll finish up the final installment of the Limpless Crankbait series and keep moving forward from there. So see you guys later, bye.